Hi everybody, it's Monday Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying another classic Soul War pattern, Bucktail Deceiver. Um, basically, I posted a few photos of some some of these and some beasts and some bulkheads and stuff, and I was getting asked quite a few questions, so I thought I'd just sort of start with the the, the beginning, uh, if you like, and tie the Bucktail Deceiver, and then sort of progress along doing videos for some different versions of it so we'll do the most basic version uh, as always there will be a link a list of the materials in the description below along with a link to some social media and patreon for anybody who would like to support the channel and be, any, be eligible for future giveaways so I've got a long shank salt water hooking device here this is a must add uh, S74. It's a 2 watt. It's a good hook for these. Um, although I might like a slightly wider gape, but it's a decent hook. Just got to run a bed, a thread. Along the shank, right to the back, and then I'll come back and leave my thread hanging at the point of the hook. So I'll tie in my tail, which is obviously bucktail. I'm going to, although the version that was in the the vice was um, just true and white, I'm going to tie each stage, each uh, stage will be a different colour on this one just to let you see how to build the taper. I think that's something that a lot of people kind of struggle with. So I'm using red here. I'm going to make it like a fire tail, which is quite an effective colour for like pike and things. So, although it's a bit of a small fly for pike. To select the length that I want, I'll tie in this red first. Just two loose wraps. I'll just push to spread the bucktail around the shank. And I'm going to take a couple of wraps forward, tightening as I go. Right, I don't want to tighten too much at the back there at the tie end point at the first couple of wraps. I mean, they will be, they will tighten a bit as you pull, but I don't want to over pressurise the bucktail and make it off flare too much. And you can sort of roll it to relax it a wee bit as well that's fine trim away my waist now I like to always for a bit of durability put super glue on the butts Especially when you're tying with the monofilament thread. Um, although this is quite strong, but it does no harm to cover that up. You can see there now that's nice and nice and secure. Perfectly covered. And then I'll take my thread forward about a quarter of the way up the shank and then come in with some more super glue just coat everything just makes for a very strong fly 
ideally, usually um, I'd tie a couple at a time and I'd just keep switching, but that would take ages on the video, so. Next I'm going to use some orange. It's just the same thing again, I've just got to grab it by the tips. Pull out any short fibres. Clean out any rubbish. And then I'll offer this in. It's got to be shorter than the red, right? Make sure that glue's all dry. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh. Oh. So, same again, just a couple of loose wraps, push down, surround the shank, make sure it's even, let it evenly distribute it, as you can sort of tighten up, see where it is, so we've got a wee bit too much there so, just ease off the tension, spread that a wee bit better, tighten back up. So, what you can do Depending on the shape that you want, right? And I'm just going to tie quite a round the version. But for example, you can squeeze. So when the when you've got the bucktail distributed, you can release the tension a wee bit, pinch it. So here I'm pinching horizontally across the shank and tighten back up. And that gives you like a wider spread to your bucktail, right? Well, they distributed that very well there, but yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like a wide spread. Or, same again, I can just slacken that off, let it go back to the middle. If I pinch vertically and tighten, it will sort of hold that vertical picture. It depends what sort of bait fish you're trying to imitate. The other option is like a sort of triangular pinch. Right, you'll not really see that so well but it gives you like a flat on the top, sort of v-shape, slightly rounded. Like, um, maybe if you're imitating mullet or something you might go for that. But um, as I said, this one I'm just going to tie it sort of in the round. So, we'll get that, get that in, make sure it's distributed and tie it. Tie it in tight. Some away my waist. any fibres. Get your super glue. And cover everything up again. We we'll come forward again. To almost to say about a third of the way, oops, put that in the vice. To about a third of the way up, nearly half actually. Of what's left of the shank, and that's going to be my next tie-in. Now, I'm not putting any flash in this fly, but if I was, 
I would put the flash tie in halfway between the bucktail tie-ins. So the next bucktail tie-in will be here. Where my scissors are. Yeah, I'll just leave my finger there, part my finger there. But the the I tie in my flash like my angel here or whatever here. Right, so it's sort of independent of the bucktail and the tie-in's not going to push the bucktail flat or anything like that. Or too flat, I should say. You'll just get a slightly better result if you do that. Uh, and I'd go for lighter flashes, angel hair, maybe maybe crystal flash. A lot fine, fine, fine flasher, but if you use something too heavy, it can fall out of the fly. So a droop when you're fishing it. <clears throat> it doesn't work very well. Uh, next we'll go for some chartreuse. And you can thick if you wish, if you want to, you can thicken up your bunches as you start going forward now. Um just helps to kinda of add a bit of bulk. It's up to you again, it depends on what exact exactly what kind of bait fish you try to imitate. How much disturbance you want to cause at the front and the overall the general overall taper that you're going for, it can sort of vary a wee bit. So you get some of the really long ones. And it's just the same thing. Again, we've got our red, we've got our orange, and the chartreuse tips are going to be just getting shorter as we go forward. The hair's actually probably about the same length, actually, but the tips are obviously further forward in the fly. It's just the same again, just a couple of loose wraps and you can tighten it up. It's a wee bit short that actually I'm going to lengthen it. Just a touch. You can always go back if you're not happy. There we go, that's better. Right. And it's a good idea if you're not sure on the length, squeeze it. Because it's not sure you to the final the final shape will look like a wee bit better than it looks at the moment. Get it spread. So you've got good coverage all the way around. and then tighten down. And as before, super glue. Another colour will go for purple. Good size bunch of purple. Same again, clear out all the short stuff. Any fuzz or anything that you don't want. Oh, I 
certainly done a bigger bunch than that. Sometimes, um, you know, when you're changing between tails, you find that you actually need to pull a thicker clump from one tail than you do from another. Just depends how much you're losing the cleaning and also how fine the fibres are. I mean, I'd always recommend you try to find the best bucktails you can, but with a natural material, sometimes you've just got to make do with what you get, what you, what is available. Same again, I'll just spread them around. Make sure that I've completely covered the shank. Tighten up on that. Make sure it runs as you like. And then Same as before, just get your super glue. And tighten down. And we're ready for our last tie. Which will be black. Sorry about that noise, there seems to be some work going on across the street. Um, I don't know if this is slightly shorter than the purple. See that black if I go like that, the black's just coming to the back of the hook basically. Which is fine for me on this one. Tighten that up. Right, that'll do. <clears throat> so you can really cinch that down. that off nice and close, make sure you don't miss any bits. Now I'll take my thread to the front and I'll wind it back into this. Into these cut ends. Quite finish. And the same again, just a bit of super glue. <coughs> and that'll uh That's the fly done, right? So it looks like a bit of a brush at the moment, right? Whereas the the uh, one that I had in the vase at the start, the citrus and white version, is seems to have a, is a nicer shape, right? This is where people, a lot of people that I've spoken to about bucktail deceivers, they sort of don't get it. They're like, how the how's that? 
nice and this one's all, all over the place. The reason is, in order to get this shape, you need to hang it. Right, you need to run it under a cold tap, right? get it nice and wet, make sure it's soaked right through, and I stick a paper clip in the eye, and hang it vertically to dry in that, and that sets the taper. It gives you a lovely, it gives you that lovely sort of tapered body, and it will hold that shape once you've done it. Right? Um, I'll just uh, I'll just wet this fly and come back uh, once it's dry, and I'll show you what I mean. So here we are, you can see that after uh, drying it, wetting it and drying it, you get this lovely tapered shape. And it will keep this when you fish, it will, it will stay like this when you fish it. Um, <coughs> if, you get, if you allow it to let lie or bent when it's wet after fishing, obviously it will dry in that shape but you can always reset it with more water but um, hopefully that sort of helps you get the idea of what you end up with all right hope that was useful hope you enjoyed it if it was please remember to subscribe to my channel like the video etc tight lines guys bye